Answer is C. Answer should be B. Answer is C. Answer on this one is C. Pick a number from 1 to 20. Uh, lottery numbers today are 7, 9, 10, 12, and 18. To multiply 2 by 2 matrices and solve for X and Y. Here's example one. So there's a pair of matrices multiplied together and the answer is at the end of it. But what you have to find are X and Y that are within that first matrix. So look at where X is at. It's in the first row. So what you want to do is line up that first row with a column from the second matrix and then an answer from the answer matrix. So if we're in the first row here, we can choose column one, and that would pertain to what answer in the answer matrix? Row one and then column one in the second one pertains to what number in the last matrix? 26, yeah. So if I did two times seven, and then plus x times 4, I would come up with an answer of 26. But I have to solve for x. So from that point, you would simplify to get 14 plus 4x equals 26. Move that 14 to the right. Come up with a 12. And x would be 3. So there's the X. You have to do the same thing for the Y now. So when we go to the Y, we can use this, and we can go back to this column. If I use row 2 and column 1, what number does that pertain to in the answer matrix? If I use this row and this column, well, if I were to multiply those together, which number do I get in that last matrix? What's in row 2, column 1 of the answer matrix? 58, yeah. So you would set it up down here at the bottom. We could do uh, y times 7, just 7y. And then the 4 times 4 is 16 and set that equal to 58. Now if I subtract 16 from 58, I'll come up with 42, and Y would have to be what answer? 6. So X is 3, and Y is 6. Here's example 2. In this one, you have an X in the first matrix and a Y in the second one. So what you want to do is try to line this up to where you have, for example, an X in that row. You would not want to use column 1 in the second matrix because if you did that, you would end up with two variables and you, you won't be able to solve for it. So we're still going to use this row here to solve for x, but we can't use this one. It has a variable in it, too. Let's use this one. So if we go here and then here, that's row 2 in the first one, and then column 2 in the second one. What answer over on this side is in row 2, column 2? 46, yeah. So go back and do the operations. So if you're multiplying this row by this column, the first thing you do is 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then add to that x times 7. So that would be 7x. And we know it pertains to 46. So from there you can solve the equation. 7x is 46 minus 4. 
which is 42, that would give us an x value of 6. We can take a look at the y. The y is in this column, so you know you have to use this column. We can't use this. Uh, technically, we could, I suppose, because we've already solved for x, but try to use one that doesn't have a variable in it already. We can use this row. The first row with that first column, what's in row 1, column 1 of the answer matrix? First row, first column in the answer matrix has what number in it? 11. So we would go back and do 5 times y is 5y and then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So we could do plus negative 4 or just minus 4. And that pertains to the 11, so we set that equal. And solve. 5y equals 11 plus 4, which is 15. So y would have to be equal to 3. 6 and 3. Try this one and see what you can get. Bring it up. Alright, here we have an X in this spot. So this row must be multiplied by a column over here that does not have a variable in it. So this row and this column are our only choice to solve for X. If I'm going to use row 1 column 2, then what number does that pertain to in the last matrix? Row 1, column 2, here's row 1, column 2, it would be 18. So I'm using this, this, and this. When I multiply x by 3, I get 3x. Three, 3 times 4 is 12. And, of course, all of that is equal to the 18. So 3x equals 18 minus 12. And x equals 2. So let's look for the y now. The y is in this column. We've already used this one. You could plug 2 in for x and use that one, but let's not do that. Let's use one that has them both already there. Let's use this row and this column to solve for y. That's row 2, column 1, and that pertains to 36. So 9 times 2 is 18, and then 3 times y is 3y. All of that is equal to 36. 3y equals 36 minus 18. 3y equals 18, that means y would have to be 6. So if you had 2 for x and 6 for y, you have them both right. We're going to solve for x first, so what we want to find is a column in the second matrix that has no variable. And both of them are free of variables, so you could use this with this column and 22 or you could use this with the second column and 20. The choice is yours. I'm going to use this, this, and this. x times 7 is 7x and 6 times a negative 1 is negative 6. I can write it as minus 6 and set it equal to 22. So 7x equals 22 plus 6, 7x equals 28, and x would have to equal 4. Now for the y, we have to use this row. We could use this one again, but I'm going to use this one, this one, which means it would pertain to row 2, column 2, that's going to be 15. So I'm using this, this, and this. Alright, so 3 times 7 is 21. 
Oh, I was using the first column. That should be 3 times 5. Yeah, 3 times 5 would be 15. And then y times uh, 0. Well, look what happens when you use that. You come out with 0y and you're not able to solve anything. It's just a true statement of 15 equals 15. So there's no choice but to use that first column since you have a 0 there. So I'll use this one and this one which would be 21 minus y equals the 19. So negative y equals 19 minus 21. Negative y equals negative 2. That means y would equal 2. Here's x. And we really don't have a choice but to use this with this because you have a variable in column 2. If you were to use this one and this one, you have two variables, you wouldn't be able to solve for it most likely. So we'll use row 2, column 1, and row 2, column 1 over here is the 18. Row 2, column 1, 18. So x times a negative 1 is negative x. And then 4 times 5 is 20. And all of that is equal to 18. Negative x equals 18 minus 20, which is a negative 2. But this negative sign on the x changes that to positive 2. Now for the y, it's in this column. And this row had a variable in it. We solved for it to be 2, but in cases where it's a decimal or a fraction, you probably want to go ahead and use one that has 2 that's given to you. So this row, this column, pertains to negative 30. That's this row, this column, and negative 30. So that would be a negative 6y plus 6 equals a negative 30. Negative 6y equals negative 30 minus 6, which is a negative 36. Y should be 6. So we have an x in this row, but a y in this column. So we can't use this column. We can use column 2. So row 1 column 2 is the negative 2 in that end matrix. So we're going to use this one, this one, and this one. That would come out to be 6 plus 4x equals a negative 2. 4x equals negative 2 minus 6, which will be a negative 8. And your x is a negative 2. Now we have this column for the y. Let's use this row, this column. Row 2, column 1 is the 6. So we're using this, this, and this to get 6 minus 4y equals 6. A negative 4y equals 6 minus 6, which is a 0. y would have to be 0. 0 and negative 2.